Can you use the law of attraction to time travel? Hey, happy shiny puppies. This is Melody Fletcher with Deliberate Receiving, where the law of attraction finally makes some freaking sense. Yay! Today's burning question comes from Awesome Sita. And she says, my burning question is regarding time travel. Because we have law of attraction, parallel lives, and time is not linear, we should definitely be able to time travel, right? Could it be that we're engaging in time travel all the time but aren't aware of it due to the fact that one has to completely let go of the old self in order to shift to a parallel life? Can you enlighten us, please? Well, Awesome Sita, you actually got it pretty much right on the money with your idea, but I'm happy to elaborate as always. The short answer to whether or not you can time travel is, yep, totally. And yes, we do it all the time. Now, for those of you who haven't come down this rabbit hole quite to this extent yet, let me give you just a tiny little bit of pre-explanation about what Sita is talking about here in terms of parallel lives. There is no past and there is no future. Everything is happening right here, right now. So when we're talking about past lives or future lives or other lives, we're really just talking about parallel lives. They're happening in parallel to the life that you're having right now. Now, time travel movies have kind of given us the wrong idea with the whole grandfather paradox that you could go back in time, meet your younger self or meet your grandfather, for example, um, kill him off and therefore cease to exist. That's not really how it works because that presupposes that there's only one timeline and that you're sort of jumping back and forth on that timeline. But that's not really how it is. Think of it more like this. It's like a series of film strips, like a series of movie film strips on a reel, and they're all static. So there's all these different versions of you that are happening all at the same time, but as far as you're concerned, they're just standing there all still. And when you take your focus out of this version of you and you put your focus into a different version of you, that then becomes your reality and it starts to move because you're moving through it. It's your focus that animates it. Now, when you shift into a different film strip, when you shift into a different reality, you're shifting into a completely different person. So when you're shifting into the past, you're actually shifting into a different reality or even a different dimension, if you will, and you're getting a completely different version of yourself that you are now entering into or possessing, if you will. You are animating that reality through your focus, but you are now a completely different person, meaning that your memories are going to be different, your past, your future, all of that's going to be different because you'll have different experiences. Sometimes those experiences are only slightly different from the ones that you uh, had before, and sometimes they can be vastly different. Most people, when they want to shift into the past, they want to go back in time, they want to try time travel, are really doing it out of a desire to change the present. They think, if only I could go back in time and I could change this, I could kill off Hitler and that mess will never have happened. Or I could uh, kick that bully uh, in the gonads that was bullying me on the, on, the, on the playground and I could save myself a whole lot of pain. I could tell myself to never, ever, ever date that guy in the 12th grade because, oh my God, what a douche. But when you're thinking about going back to the past in order to change your present, you're misunderstanding the fact that everything is happening in the present and that you don't need to go back to the past to change your present. You can simply change your present now. When you, for example, discover a belief within yourself that you are not worthy or that, um, let's say that, you know, all men are evil, and then you, uh, you can see that in your reality by the fact that you're really just attracting douchebags all over the place, then when you change that belief, your entire reality changes because you change. You are in that moment shifting into a completely different film strip where your past is actually different. The problem is, as Sita stated, you're not necessarily going to be aware of that. In fact, in most cases, you're not going to be aware of it. You're not going to retain the memories that you had before. Your life is just going to get better. But because of the time that we live in right now, because we're in this beautiful high vibration that's getting higher and higher, because we're in the time of awakening, 
there are going to be instances when you're going to be aware of the shift, which means that you're going to retain just a little bit of that old memory, sometimes only for a little while, so that you can actually see the difference and become consciously aware of the fact that you shifted into a version of yourself where that past is no longer relevant because it's no longer your past. And in those instances, you may still sort of vaguely remember, although again, that's going to drift out over time, you're going to kind of vaguely remember that maybe uh, the guy in the 12th grade with the douchebag, but you're not going to care anymore, and it, you're not really going to think about it anymore, and it's not going to affect you anymore, and after just a little while, you're going to stop telling that story all together. It will drift completely out of that reality because it was never really part of the new reality that you're in. Now, having said all of that, is it possible to connect with your past or future selves? Yes, absolutely, because it's all happening now. But remember that you'll only connect to those parallel lives of yours that are relevant, meaning there has to be a vibrational match there, just like with any other manifestation. Now, why would you do that? Well, actually, you do it all the time in order to get a broader perspective, in order to get more information. A lot of the impulses and ideas that you're having are actually coming to you from knowledge that you've gained in a parallel life because your higher self, who you really are, has view of all of those parallel lives and all of the information contained within them. That's how it really knows where to send you, where to give you the impulse to go, because it has all of that information. And this is also why we should never, with our little one focus, when one reality human brains try to figure out how something has to come about. We don't have nearly the information that our higher self does. So it's way better to trust our higher self to give us the directions based on the view that, that it has rather than trying to figure it out for ourselves down here. And when you connect to a parallel life, you can get information. You can manifest clarity that way. You can manifest clarity in many, many different ways, but this is a really fun way to do it. So for example, I have uh, in my meditations connected with several parallel lives. Uh, one of them, for example, a future version of myself, the future version that I am heading towards. And I was able to get some clarity from her. Now, did she give me anything that I wasn't allowed to have? No, of course not. Was she giving me anything that I was ready for? No, of course not. So it really acts kind of like as a guide. I'm connecting with a different aspect of myself in order to get that guidance, but I might as well be connecting with a spirit guide or manifesting through a book or a song or a seminar or a blog post or a YouTube video. It doesn't really matter how I get that clarity. This is just one other avenue that can open up for you. Another thing that I want to address in terms of time travel is that even though there really isn't such thing as time in terms of everything that's happening right now in parallel, we do perceive a linear timeline. And there is great value in that. There's continuity in that. It makes sense to us and it gives us a structure in which we can operate. I have had one experience in my own life personally where I was in a San Pedro ceremony in Peru and, uh, and I really expanded out to everything that is. I became everything that is way farther than my conscious mind could ha handle and I completely, you know, just lost consciousness and I was out of there. And when I came back in, I had a little bit of a rough re-entry, and what happened is that I came back in out of time sequence. So even though I still saw the linear time sequence, I experienced things out of time. So something that happened to the something that I experienced first was actually something that happened after the thing that I experienced next. This was profoundly disorienting. And I got to tell you, if I hadn't gotten rid of the uh, fear that I'm going to go insane uh, doing this kind of work um, a few years ago, I never would have been able to handle this kind of experience. It was, it was very, very disorienting. And for just a little while, and I couldn't even tell you how long, because again, time wasn't existing in that place. Um, I really didn't know where um, I was and if I was really here and what was real and sort of everything was kind of converging. And so I can tell you it was, it was valuable, but it was also quite uncomfortable for me because um, the, you know, you're used to having the structure of the linear time and when that gets taken away, um, our human minds really aren't built to handle that all that well. And so I can tell you, you know, me personally, I prefer to have the structure of the linear timeline to, to think of it in terms of, okay, there's past and there's future and there's present, uh, even though I know intellectually those don't exist, to experience my reality that way is actually quite valuable. And I think that if you think about it, most of you will probably agree. 
Want to go further down the rabbit hole with me? Well, come on over to my blog at deliberatereceiving.com and click on the blog, and there are hundreds of articles there, many of them of this caliber, of this level, a little bit further down the rabbit hole. It's not basic law of attraction stuff. It's really advanced law of attraction stuff. It's all represented there from woo to woo woo. So any level that you really want to engage with me on, you can. I cannot wait to see you over there.